you know, the worst scream came from a Ghostbuster. Mm. Uh, rolling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. <laughs> Just... Fonzo Rivera was acting his ass off in that scene. <laughs> There is a movie coming out in about a week. As I always say, could be out already by the time you see this. Most likely it will be out by the time you see this. How that movie performs, whether people liked it or not, we don't know yet. Yeah, we know. I've seen it. Ooh. I'm not telling people what I think oh, yet. Okay. You'll just have to watch the review, which will I, I'm, I'm sure will be up by the time you see this too. But the movie that's coming out that everybody's looking forward to mm. is based on a horror classic. Ooh, okay. That Bruce Willis back there. Yeah. <laughs> Die Hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> crawled into the yeah, crawled into the <laughs> ventilation yeah, shaft. Crawled the air duct. Don't mind me. I'm you know, trying to stop terrorists, zombies. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Are the Evil Dead mm. people? That is Evil Dead Rise. That's based on the Sam Raimi classic, which has gone through usually a horror classic. Yes, hard horror movie classic. Not the the first one wasn't. Then you had. Two others. One that was very much a hard classic. One that was more like a fantasy classic. Fantasy, and then you had one that was a hybrid horror comedy. The horror Evil comedy. Dead Two. Yeah, Evil Dead Two. That's yeah. what, what. Didn't I say horror comedy? I just say horror classic. You said I'm horror classic. I'm sorry. I'm. You're right. Horror comedy. No, it's fine. It's fine. That's exactly what. The Army of Darkness say. is a fantasy as well. It's a I fantasy. Agree. It's a 100%. medieval fantasy movie. This one is going back to just straight up horror mm -hmm. with a slight bit of uh, wicked humor in there. Oh, okay. What we think about it? Well, that'll be saved for another day. But today we're going to be talking about an old episode of a cartoon from back in the day. That many of you, I'm sure, you told me about this. Yeah, yeah. Many of you saw, might have scared the hell out of you kids out there because you were probably so little. <laughs> and the reason why we're doing this is because this is like like Evil Dead. This is something where evil spirits are the, are the dead has come right. back to terrorize innocent people, mm -hmm. people who just mind their own business, just mm -hmm. trying to live their life, living life. Yep. This episode of a show called. Some of y'all remember this. You're going to be like, oh, shit, I remember that. Yeah. Extreme Ghostbusters. Extreme! Not just busting ghosts. No, no. We're busting ghosts to the extreme. The extreme, baby. Mm. That is not Slimer. Oh, that's, yeah? No, that's Mountain Dew. Oh, that's how extreme it is. That's how extreme yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Extreme it is. <laughs> We're hanging out with sentient Mountain Dew. Of course, of course. <laughs> Very nice. Good. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a spinoff or a sequel to sequel. the real Ghostbusters. Yep. Yeah, this is the generation that came after them. We'll talk about the connection between the two in a little bit. But they did an episode of this. Now, I didn't really watch a whole lot of extreme Ghostbusters back in the day. I remember it. Mm -hmm. This came out in 19... This came out in 1997. Uh, uh, yep. And... Because I remember you came in and you were like, man, that came out in 2002. I thought, I thought it was the 2000s. But yeah, see, it's yeah. easy to think that because, first of all, that style was all through it, the it, it late was. 90s late and the early 90s, 2000s. Late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. Yeah, so that 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 art style, that animation style was uh, pretty prominent at the time. Mm -hmm. But this is 1997, lasted one season. Now, I would not be surprised. I did not have a chance to really go in and dig deep with this show, right. which is kind of a good thing because I was shocked mm -hmm. by this show. This show, when they, now, when they talk about extreme, I thought that they were going to be busting ghosts on skateboards <laughs> yes, and, and mountain yeah. bikes. Yeah, drinking, well, well, drinking and, energy drinks. And, and yeah. drinking a bunch of Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah, of course. Snowboarding and shit. You know, mm -hmm, no, they, mm -hmm. no, I wonder if it's called extreme because they really push the boundaries, I believe, of what you can do on a kid's show with this. I would not be surprised, and you tell me, I would not be surprised if this was yanked after one season because it was just a little too intense. I wouldn't even say it's too intense for the kids. Probably little kids, but you know how, man, you know how those uptight adults are. The parents are like, I can't have my child watch this. This is too terrifying. This is it, man. Yeah. It really, listen, I'm looking at this. Yeah. And what I think I would, if, if I had a kid, I think I could raise my kid to probably handle stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But I could see parents being concerned. Well, the 90s was that that decade where, you know, because after the 80s, you you had the stuff like, you know, He-Man and TMNT and a lot of Transformers, a lot yeah. of the same stuff, right? The 90s, I feel like, was definitely a kind of <clears throat> renaissance for not only animation theatrically, 
but also for television where they started to push boundaries more. They're like, hey, let's make it more adult. Let's let's bring in a lot of adult innuendo. And, yeah. you know, I think I feel like this is also a part of that where they felt like, hey, let's bring in some horror stuff from some uh, franchise that's been going on yeah. for a long time or popular book series. So this was I believe this, this was like on it wasn't on Saturday mornings. It was because by that time, Saturday morning cartoons were kind of fading. I think this was coming on like on a was this like Fox or something? Or? That, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, it yeah. came on afternoon television. The Fox Animation like Block. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm not sure though. Like I said, I didn't have the time. I didn't have the time to really go deep with this. So I, I went into this very cold. Like I used to like to study the background of these or research these. And going into this, I really was like, oh shit, man. Right. This is not what I expected at all with yeah, this. Yeah. So yeah. thing is with this. Now let me say, let me just say this because I, I, I never would think. If you ask me in a million years, if you could do this, if you told me that you could take Hellraiser <laughs> and make it a kid friendly yeah, man, cartoon why not? show Look for at those. Look at those guys. <laughs> I was out here. No, I would never say you could do that. Y'all <laughs> yeah. know that y'all know Hellraisers with the, the, the chains and the pill skin and the and the mm -hmm. pleasure and the mm -hmm. pain and the pin in the heads and the and uh, you know all the organs exposed and Angels whatnot. to some, demons to, to others. To others. Yes. Mm -hmm. I never would think that you could make a kid friendly version of Hell of Hellraiser, mm -hmm. but those Ghostbusters did it, man. They, they, they did. Somehow. Mm -hmm. And even then, I, I put in quotes, kid-friendly. Yeah, still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this, when you deal with Hellraiser, ain't nothing exactly kid-friendly. No, it's still kind of weird and controversial and creepy, at, you know, at the very yeah, least. No, very much so. So how? How in the hell? Pun intended. Mm -hmm. How in the <laughs> Hellraiser? <laughs> Did they actually take Hellraiser or at least the feeling and themes of Hellraiser and actually put it into a kid's show? And I'm I'm not lying here. There are some very, very tight connections here between Hellraiser oh, and this. That I'm like, there's no way that this was not influenced by oh, yeah. Clive Barker and Hellraiser, mm -hmm. the, you know, the series, mm -hmm. series of movies that were out there. So how did they do that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this episode. It's called Deadliners. Deadliners, yeah. And... We'll reveal what the plot is about as we go along. But I will say this. So going into this, not knowing anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Because I've, I've seen probably a handful of these episodes and remember none of them. Right. Uh, I might have seen this one. Don't remember it, though. But when they open up, man, immediately they are pushing the boundaries. Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. They are hell, hell of a cold opening. Yes. They are pushing the boundaries of what you can do. For a kid show right here. Uh, they don't waste time with it. So it opens up you, so it opens up a body hard, or yep, at least being yep. very horrible for somebody's body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very much so, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, they got so they got it opens up with this poor guy tied to a table. Poor Jimmy. Terrified. Yeah. Terrified. Oh Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> oh Jimmy was just trying to slay those pies, man. Ask about our pies. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> well, they didn't like the answer they got about those no, pies. No. Poor Jimmy is tied to a table, terrified. Now, I'm looking at this room right here. <laughs> Nobody's in there. I'm thinking, well, you know, old Jimmy might have a chance. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, he, he might be. Jimmy's skinny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he, he hasn't been eating the pies as no, much as everybody no. else. He can kind of Jimmy his way out of yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. that's, what I, that's what I thought. Oh, Jimmy might have a chance. Slim Jimmy over there. Slim Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy out of the ropes right there. Yes. You know, he plays like a, he looks like a smart guy. So, mm -hmm. you know, then I start seeing imagery again that you would not normally see in a kid's show. Now, looking at this, I'm looking at Jimmy on this table right here. <laughs> now, I'm sure that they want you to think that that is rust. I'm thinking that is blood. Yeah, dried blood. And the reason I'm thinking that's dried blood, because I thought, all right, it's a metal table. They're not going to show you blood in here. That's rust. That's scraped off the metal or something. But all then right. you look on the floor. Yeah. There's blood all down there's, there. There's more of it, yeah. yeah. They never so they've been, to clean up. They've been chopping people up on this table right yep. here. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I I I couldn't tell if that was a shadow or if that was the, the uh, blood down there, but I'm gonna say blood. Yeah. Since it's everywhere already. Or it could be shit, you know. Or it could be shit. Yeah, someone just shit themselves. I mean, I would. I think we all would, yeah. you know. About to be, you know, Maybe disfigured. That is Jimmy shit down there. It could there. be, yeah. That's Jimmy shit. Mm -hmm, yeah. He had a bowel movement. <laughs> As anybody would. Can't blame mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And and then, uh, then we see very much we're getting into Hellraiser imagery. Mm -hmm. We start seeing chains. And yeah. not just chains. Chains with hooks. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there's blood on the wall over there. Yep, yep. There's darker blood on, red too, by the it's way. It's darker red. There's blood yeah. on his bench right here. Yep. So they've been busy. <laughs> yes. As I said, a lot of people have been chopped up in this joint. And then our, our worst fears are confirmed. They start pulling up the tools. Mm-hmm. You know, all those little tools that you use to pull off fingernails and slice things in and skin. And and yeah, torture tools. Yeah. So, and then you like, you know what, Jimmy? Yeah. You know, at this point, it's like Jimmy ain't getting out of this. I love that the first word out of their mouth is flesh. Yes. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy. And the bites from Hellraiser, you're right. Exactly. Those, of flesh. And those are obviously Cenobites, y'all. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look, you're looking at this right here. Like, uh, these dudes roll up, and we're looking at them with the skin. Like, again, their skin is pulled back. They got, yeah. they got you know, tools in their heads. Mm-hmm. He's got a, he's got a, what is a, 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 saw, blade. a saw blade in his head right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those are the ones in the Rated R movie right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 the originals. Mm-hmm. I would First say two. that at least one of these, the, the version of these Cenobites in this cartoon right mm-hmm. here is worse than the the, the Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. And the reason why, like, I want y'all to take a look at this right here. A blank canvas promising infinite aesthetic possibility. That's people, that's a talking anus. That is an asshole right that there. That is yeah. an asshole. That's an anus right there. That's an anus with eyes on his head. Yeah, <laughs> with eyes for hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, horrifying even, design. Even Hellraiser is not that. Oh yeah. Clive Barker got to like the the the, the asshole for a head and said, "No, nah, I'm not doing that." That's a little too extreme for me. That's a little too extreme. <laughs> a little too much. Not not too extreme for Ghostbusters. Well, extreme. Hey, we'll, we'll go that way. Hey, we're extreme that, Ghostbusters. That's, that's a centibite <laughs> called anus head. Anus head. Yeah. Hundred percent. It spink the mouth. Oh God. <laughs> and it gets worse with this one. We'll oh, yeah. show you in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, well, uh, that, that, I'm sure when they were making this cartoon, behind the scenes at the studio, they were calling this character anus head. And I also like just like the eyes for hands. It reminds me of, I mean, this is before the Pan's movie, Labyrinth. but Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. yeah. There's, this this actually, a couple, there's a few things here that predate a lot of other movies yeah. out there. But yeah, that's the Pan's Labyrinth design mm-hmm. right there. So far, <laughs> this is the darkest version of Ghostbusters I've ever seen. It is, and that's what makes it so exciting yeah. and fresh. <laughs> Even the theme song, you know, because because oh. after that, you expect it. da 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 Something weird in the neighborhood. No, it ain't. No, 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 man. They got rid of that guy. <laughs> they did, no, that, first of all, that guy got sued oh, did he? By, by another dude named Huey Lewis. Oh. They say he ripped off his song. Oh, uh, really? I need a new drug. One that does what it should. Oh, wow. Da, 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 da. Oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, that, damn. And he won, I think. Oh. So they said, no, so much for that happy shit. No, they, if you were expecting to start snap your fingers and tap your feet to Ray Parker Jr., think again. In your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Now, you thought everybody was gonna be Ghostbusters! Mm. Shit, everybody's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, we're not saying that. It's a little darker theme. Yeah. Do you know who does the, the vocals for this? No. Jim Cummings, who has been voicing cartoon characters for, I don't know, 40 yeah, years. Yeah, they did. Winnie the Pooh and all that. Winnie and the Pooh, uh, Pete from the Goof Troop. Oh, uh, yeah. That, really? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Mm hmm. You know, I thought that was a, a guitar amp that they were turning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start playing the theme stopped. song. Yeah. Because <laughs> the voice started getting fuzzy and everything. Yeah, yeah. I like that they changed so much. Yeah. I said, damn, that brother got some big ass lips. <laughs> well, that was the design, man. If you were a black character from this animation studio, you had big swollen if, lips. If you, yes, they, no, that's what's the thing. That's what you're it right. Was, man. If you were a black character and they had this, the, the studio mm-hmm. that does these designs, they gave you big black juicy lips. You look like you got stunned by a bee. Yeah. <laughs> no now, this is the reason why I kept wanting to play it because, you know, I'm looking at this in addition to that brother having big juicy lips. Uh, this uh, this show was actually a little progressive, man. It's extremely progressive. Yeah, because <laughs> we'll tell you why. First of all, let's start with Kylie right here. Uh, Kylie, I, I would say, I don't know for sure because I'm not as knowledgeable in Ghostbusters lore as many other people out there. Because, you know, you got some fanatics about this. Oh, yeah. But, but she's the first 
female Ghostbuster that I've seen. As far as I know. As far and by the way, keep in mind that while everybody was talking about, you know, Ghostbusters uh uh 2016 being, right. being the big thing because they had female Ghostbusters, uh this predates that again. It does. You know? Yeah. yeah this yeah, by nearly it. 20 years. Kylie's very good because Kylie, they actually do something with her. Uh she's like an extension of uh uh of uh um uh, Janine. Oh, oh no! Of uh, man, who who was a uh, uh, the guy who's the paranormal guy? Oh, Egon. Guy. Egon. Mm-hmm. She's an extension of Egon mm-hmm. uh, because she's the most knowledgeable in the paranormal than the rest of the crew. But clearly, Gore sells, <coughs> and his preteen fans are crying for more. I'm crying for less. Klein's given demonology a bad rep. Ooh, she, so yeah, she's talking about demonology here. I don't. I had, like, being that I can't remember the show. She's probably done a lot more. But voiced by a big voice actress Tara Strong. Yeah, I know. She's. Yeah. She, I mean, literally yeah, I mean, dozens, if not hundreds, of characters yeah. at this point. Yeah, that is somebody who's made a great living. I'm sure. Absolutely, doing yeah. a lot of voice acting, and she's great as this character. And yeah, she has a lot of uh, personality. She's like a, the, the goth girl of the group. <laughs> yeah, she is because mm-hmm. because she knows you know so much about. The paranormal, you know, they also had to make her a big ass goth girl too. Mm-hmm. And you can see she got on the makeup and the dark hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's pale. Mm-hmm. This is also the first Ghostbusters in another progressive way to have a handicapped member. Yes, yeah, correct. Hey, Busters, any calls? Tons. I think Eduardo's being sarcastic. Thanks, Roland. You know, I'm handicapped. I'm not stupid. Yeah, don't touch me. <laughs> yeah. <that word. laughs> Like get your big lip ass away from me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since this is a, a, a spinoff from the real Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. they kind of have those same types in there. Like, t- to round out the crew, you have back here, you have uh, you have Eduardo, yes. who's the, the smart ass character. Um, you have Roland, who's the black Ghostbuster, because you always got to have a black Ghostbuster. Guy, black guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that's uh, what do you call that? Uh, Mandatory? <laughs> yeah, mandatory. Yeah, oh, no, no. oh, your token? Uh, uh, to- token, yeah. But uh, th- they are not the... I like that they're not mimicking no, completely. They're not. The original the crew, because that's what they did with the real Ghostbusters. You know, they were kind of version, the extensions of these. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I thought that they did a good job at giving them their own personalities while also making them, you know, rounding out the crew in a familiar way that people want them to be. Sure, of course. Yeah. Um, so the episode, as far as the story goes, affirmative action, by the way, that's what I was thinking. Oh, affirmative <laughs> yeah, action. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah brother, because of affirmative action. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's interesting because like some of these characters, like, okay, it's like, oh, we have like a character who's handicapped, but his personality is like, he's a jock. That's yeah. what makes him kind of stand out, you and, know? And, and, and but, they don't but, care but, that he's in a wheelchair either. No, <laughs> they, they, no, they, they don't. They give him a lot of shit. They, they, no, they do. Well, because he's full of himself. Yeah. And it almost feels like, well... I feel like his personality is that way because he's like, well, I'm in a wheelchair, so I have to be bigger than everybody else, yeah. which is interesting. I kind of like that. They're probably glad he's in a wheelchair because he'd, be <laughs> he'd be a bigger dick if he wasn't. Because he really not. Because be. they don't like this guy, I don't think. No, I mean, no. He's, he's arrogant. He's yeah. Arrogant, especially in this episode. Yeah. They, he he kind of just gets on everybody's nerves, mm-hmm. man. And voiced by Jason Marsden, who has been, I mean, voicing characters, what, the 30 years in animation? Yeah. Max Goof from the Goofy movie. Yeah. Extreme Goofy movie. Extreme Goofy movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does a lot of extreme projects. Projects. Yes, he does. So, the story here, uh, episodes, deal, it, it deals with a writer who might sound very familiar to you. <laughs> J.N. Klein, famous author of horror novels for children. He has a novelist enjoyed so much mm. wealth and recognition. Dang, he got those lips too. <laughs> he got, he got, doesn't matter if you're black or white, you got yeah. big lips. <laughs> I can't tell what he is. He must be mulatto or something. <laughs> Dang, he got them chimpanzee lips going. <laughs> yes, I didn't. No, I don't know if he's like he was a white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming he's a white guy. <laughs> he's odd looking. Let's okay, just say let's that. just say that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like you know uh, Stephen King or R.L. Stein. <laughs> uh, R. If the name sounds familiar, yeah, that's a take on R.L. Stein, yeah. the guy who wrote Goosebumps. So this mm-hmm. is a parody of him, right? Uh, yeah, here. definitely. But I tell you, we don't know what he's doing. But ready to fill his spot is. This is what we're talking about, Garrett. Mm-hmm. Garrett's out there doing some shit he shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know, he's it's not not he's he's uh, driving that wheelchair out of the, out of his lane. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Mm-hmm. So since uh, since uh, uh, J.K. Klein or whatever his name is, you know, uh, 
<laughs> Klein, Jay, Jay, Jay Klein. and Klein yeah. is not writing as many books. Now Garrett thinks like, well, you know what? I, I can write. I, you know what? I'll I'll fill the void out there for all the horror fans and all the kids that he's not writing books for. Specifically from Hair Raising Tales. The horror magazine? The very same one that gave Stephen King and J.N. Klein their starts. I am waiting to hear back about my manuscript. Say, Say what? what? Maybe they do think he's mentally handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> Because nobody has any faith in him. No, man. like, really? Okay. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Hmm. Like, these are people who've seen ghosts on the regular, and now there's this is what they're shocked by. They're in disbelief. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you get some laughs from this. You know, they play up the comedy because it's a kid's show, but really, not much. No. Uh, Man, this, this episode. It's a, it, uh, yeah, I haven't, I don't remember a lot of the other episodes, but this is a very dark episode. It is, yeah. Um, I think it's considered to be like the darkest of this series. Really? And certainly probably the real Ghostbusters as well, combining all of them. Yeah, because even the movies are not this dark. No, not at all. And th- now you look at it, you're thinking, well, what's so dark about it? If, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, then they're making jokes and, you know, they're, 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 you know, they got a little comedy going on, comedy relief with Garrett writing novels and whatnot. What's so, what's yeah. so dark about this? Well, they started, well, you saw how it started out, for one, but then they started investigating Jimmy, right. the guy who disappeared at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And when they go looking for uh, Jimmy, of course, they go at the pie place that he was working at. Right. And they start talking to either his boss or one of his coworkers, one of the chefs at this pie place. And this guy is just traumatized. He is. <laughs> like this this guy's all shook up. He's in man. shock. Yeah, well yeah, he's very much in shock. Can you describe them? They took Jimmy. He just kept screaming. They, they took him. <laughs> Snap out of Who that. took Jimmy? <laughs> Talk to me. I like the Where's way Jimmy? No. You know <laughs> I like the way they couldn't animate it too fast, so no. they just just kind of shook yeah. him slow. Uh, <laughs> he, I like he has this like dead-eyed stare at one point. It's like he's looking at all of us. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, he's shocked. <laughs> that one, there it is. <laughs> he's looking right at the audience yeah, right he, now. That man is seeing things. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> he's seen things and heard things. Yeah. Oh, he's screaming. <laughs> Jimmy was screaming. <laughs> you know what's funny is that. Yeah. So they do have some some. Uh, let me see. They do have some funny stuff that come up, but. While they're sitting up here laughing, let me see if I find this clip right While they're sitting up here laughing, this poor man is having a mental breakdown oh, in yeah. the background. You read kids' books? Yeah, well, uh, I read them to kids. <laughs> hey, hey, they're gory, you know. Oh, God. This is reality, not fiction, oh, Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy! <laughs> you can't even face reality anymore. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. What is real? What is not real? I don't know. Oh, man. Poor man. He's having a little breakdown back there. <laughs> no one cares. You know, they're just they're like making jokes about this guy reading books and this poor man's back there. Go me, you know. Oh, Jesus, God. This is oh, reality, fuck. not fiction, Eduardo. He's sitting back there getting forks and just putting his eyes out. Ah! Well, you got Alfonso Romero just kind of standing there going, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> And they, it only they did it only gets like worse from there. Or better, you know, if you're a horror fan. But it's a kid show, man. And they they really do play the horror straight. Yes, like they play up the horror very straight to the point where, you know, this kind of stuff we see in you know really hard PG thirteen or rated R movies mm-hmm. where you know when you want to when you really want to like just kind of shake somebody when they when you see a person victimized yeah because it usually end scenes with no hope for that person nope. and that's what we see right look at this woman you know she she gonna get it look oh at she's so innocent too yeah she, she's way too innocent i love my job <laughs> <laughs> she's small looks kind of frail yeah 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 mm-hmm. innocent yeah too innocent too innocent mm-hmm. to be here oh <laughs> And by the way, that's mm. Jimmy. Yeah. If you look at the, I thought that was kind of cool. If you look at the, because uh, they made it pretty obvious, like she's about to walk into his name tag. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and keep in mind, they changed Jimmy just into a Frankenstein monster. They like did. he was, mm-hmm. he was, he was kind of small mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's just so they show you the horrible things that they did to Jimmy right there. If you look at Jimmy, man, they, I mean, they just they just mutilated him. That's like right, they're like, foreman. Mm-hmm. Like they took the skin off his lips and. <laughs> made his elbows all inverted. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Look at the skin is all flapped Gave him over the, mechanical the metal parts. Like, yeah, yeah his forearms are like mechanical now. Yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. yeah. This is uh, it's horrifying. And as far as uh, 
as far as that woman, you know, you think that, okay, maybe she's going to get away because, uh, you know, this is a... It's a kid's cartoon. It's a kid's cartoon. Yeah. So, of course, they're not going to do anything bad to her. Well, <laughs> y'all saw what happened to Jim at the beginning, so think again. Be one of us. Man, Oof. ended the scene with a scream. Yeah, yeah. And then just like a drill sound. Or oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, a saw so, sound or something. So even the things that they imply just with sound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's an old rusty ass instrument, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of meat's been used Uh, on that song. Mm -hmm. Ah, and she's screaming. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, you know, the the end of the scene where she's obviously being tortured. Yeah. That's pretty intense, man. Yeah, yeah. Being deformed by these creatures. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore, man. For for it's again, extreme. for kids. To, it's, they, hey, we told you. <laughs> this ain't no regular Ghostbusters. This no. is scream Ghostbusters, that's baby. Right. Hey, folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but we have to give a word out to our sponsor right now, which is Surfshark. And you're going to want to hear about this anyway, because we're all doing the same thing. And that is spending a lot of time on the Internet, whether we're buying a bunch of stuff or subscribing to a streaming service or browsing and perusing things that we don't want other people to know about. I, I do the same thing. No judgment here. Look, no matter what. Chances are your information is out there. And that is why you not only need a good virtual private network, but you need one of the best. And that exactly is what you'll get with Surfshark. And with Surfshark, you'll get other perks too, such as being able to use Surfshark on unlimited devices. You'll get 24 seven support. Hey, are you traveling? Then you'll get access to geo restricted content. And while you're using Surfshark to protect your privacy, why not use them to protect your computer? Check out the other products, such as Surfshark Antivirus. Hey, listen, you can't put a price on your privacy, but Surfshark is so convinced that you'll be satisfied and happy with the service and love it that they're practically giving it away for free for a certain amount of time. If you go to surfshark.deals slash toasted, you'll get 83% off in three extra months for free. That is right. You don't see deals like this often, 83% off in three extra months for free. People, get the peace of mind that you need when you're on the internet with Surfshark. Like I said, look at that deal right there. They're giving away to you. I want to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there, as usual, for your support. Thank you. Now back to the video. Even the way they bust ghost in this, man, Mm. because, you know, they kind of, they do it in a funny way. Yeah. In the Ghostbusters movies. Oh, yeah. You know, Very comedic. And, and it's always the, comedic. And in the cartoons, it's fun. You know the way to do it. Here, it's kind of it's kind of graphic, man. So uh, the extreme Ghostbusters crew, they finally run into what they call here a, a craniac. Craniac, right? They got the bus on his head, mm-hmm. and so he pulled out the Ghostbusting tools and they blow his ass up. <laughs> now I know he's the bad guy here, <laughs> and he's not human, but still, it's for, it's still pretty graphic yeah, for a kid 100%. show. Trail of fiction. Either way. Well, he rolled up quick. It is great. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of motor you got in that thing, man? Look at this. <laughs> Some cheap animation in that motor. <laughs> is that what it is? I think it is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, we don't want to make this motor. Nope. Make him slide forward. <laughs> All right. When it was got hit by that bus yeah, off, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, hey, the one bed in someone's head. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at how this is uh, anime because let me look the way they do it. Like you see the explosion come out of his stomach. Yeah, yeah. His eyes are like, no. Oh. Yeah, look at this, man. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, he explodes different parts of him. Yeah, everywhere and stuff. yeah. That's pretty graphic, man. Yeah, it is. I mean, the big thing here is that you know, it's. I guess they could say, well, you know, it's not that bad because he comes back. Think again. <laughs> Think again. <laughs> Spoken like a true extreme. Mm-hmm. Think again. Mm-hmm. Radical. Um, I like the ding though when his his uh, I do his saw comes back. I like that too. <laughs> Good use of sound in this. It is. Yeah. <laughs> they fall. Oh, fuck. Oh no. <laughs> Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, I thought about you when I was watching this because, oh, yeah. you know, you love the body horror, man. I do. I do love the body horror. And the creature designs. I I, I am very surprised. I'm very shocked that the, they were able to get this past the censors. I, I can't believe it. 
Well, again, it was the 90s where they were very experimental. And I think they did a lot. Yeah. Of, they, they pushed the boundaries. They could probably get away with it today, maybe. But back back then, because, I mean, you know, we are talking about true Hellraiser designs. You know, like, look at this. The skin peeled back. Yeah, yeah. And you see the, 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 the muscles, muscles in the there. Muscle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I am. I'm, I'm wondering how this, how this happened. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and I usually don't look at cartoons like that. I'm like, well, you know, I mean, kids can handle this and that, but and they can handle this, but man, I don't know any censors to, you know, at that time that would let this happen. Again, I feel like this, like the '90s, was a time where they were a little more experimental. They were pushing boundaries. Um, and they went, ah, sure, whatever. Plus, the studio is known for doing weird things. Like, yeah. Especially, like, because the, their other big series that was going on at the same time, I believe, was Men in Black. They yeah. had a lot of disturbing alien designs. And yeah. so they went, ah, all they right. didn't have any with, like, exposed muscles and stapled ski yeah. stretched skin. And yeah, all. yeah, like, yeah. Like, wow, that is, that, yeah. Definitely I would, creepy. I mean, but I'm impressed. <clears throat> Tell you what the, the great thing is about those designs, because when you look at them, man, I mean, they show you just how painful that is. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at the skin pulled back from the eyes. Mm -hmm. You got the staples and, in and there. And the staples in the mouth and the cheek is and the exposed. exposed and, yeah. and the wiring going into the, into, into the, the muscle. The muscle. It's the like, gums. man, it's cool. I mean, it is very cool. In the library. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> and there goes Anna's head. Yeah. <laughs> talking asshole. Um, but the, the designs for this. So when these characters start fighting. Yeah. These designs help out a lot because, I mean, the, you know, the creatures are already scary. Mm -hmm. And so when they start fighting, they show you how they're about to use their tools on somebody. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they work is because the designs are so scary, but they're not joking around during the whole time. Like, no. they, like this man is fighting for his life. Yeah, yeah. And there was a moment I thought he was about to get a drill in his eyeball. Mm. <laughs> and if you notice that sound effect, listen, listen to it. That was that sound effect that uh, we was, heard earlier. You heard earlier that was used in that woman. So they drilled into her. They drilled. <laughs> yeah, you know what it reminds me of it's like uh, you go to the dentist and you have that like yeah. drill tool. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking that this character was uh, he was probably a dentist. a dentist. Yeah, in his former life. Mm -hmm. Again, man, the way they just keep pushing things. Yeah, I was, I, the whole the whole episode. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. Y'all got away with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, man, the amount of screaming. In yeah, there's a lot of screaming. Yeah. There's a lot of screaming of just innocent victims in here, man. Because there's always some a group of people that you don't really know. You just know that these people are innocent, and they're just being tortured, mm -hmm. and they're just back there screaming, just begging for help, and being tortured by these creatures. <laughs> I thought he poured acid on I them. I thought so too. And I was like, oh my God, he melted all of them. <laughs> I know, because after seeing everything they've done, like, you know, why not? He was like, he was very much like Frankenstein. We belong dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Ugh. Uh, and, you know, the worst scream came from a Ghostbuster. Mm. Uh, Roland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. <laughs> Just... Father Rivera was acting his ass off in that scene. <laughs> Help! That's what your stupid ass Ooh. gets for running up in there. Yeah, man. Don't go on the acid. Yeah, yeah don't go on the acid. <laughs> I look right, right in. What your stupid ass gets. It's melting. <laughs> we finally learn why the creatures are here. And uh, you can probably figure out what it connects to. The spirit guide says they're spectral forms who enter the realm of the living through the act of writing. If it is not written, it cannot be done. Cool thing about this is that uh, Egon has given them a lot of the tools yeah. to work with, mm -hmm. like, like knowledge, that is. If you look at the, the book here, is by Egon Spingler, mm -hmm. a Spingler spirit guy. And he's in, in, the, in the pilot episode, he's the one that brings them all together. Yeah, he's the one that brings them all together. He's in this episode, too. Mm -hmm. We've got a Code 7 abduction by bipedal interdimensional corporeals in triplicate. As usual. Talking about no, no, he never, he never speaks sense. English. No, no, he speaks Englandese, mm -hmm. Eganese. Mm -hmm. But it's Maurice LaMarche returning to voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. if these creatures are being written into existence, then that explains why they were talking about our they were introducing at the beginning of the show, yeah. uh, the, the RL the, the Klein. Klein or whatever uh, character. Kill By the way, this character 
I love when they show him because when they when you find him, they got him tied up like he's a sex slave. Yeah, they got him yeah. in like some bondage, bondage stuff. Bondage. Yep. Yeah. Again, like there's a lot of suggestive Hellraiser. things going on here, man. Kill off those Vathek deadbeats. Write him out of the story. I I, I can't. Voices in my head <laughs> won't stop. Well, they are choking him. Like you they know, are. like this is a soup of people who like to like have autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah, exactly. People yeah, like off. to jack off while mm -hmm. choking themselves, mm -hmm. which he's probably done several times. Oh, I love it. It feels so good. Don't release me. <laughs> Come back later. So as dark as this gets, man, you know, it's it's still a kid's show. So, you know, they have to make sure that everything is okay at the end. All it all is, fixes itself. It yeah. all yeah. does. I mean, there was, there's a, I'm going to play this scene right here because in this scene, they in a matter of like seconds, they wrap up everything. Yeah. Like they free uh, the writer, Stein, Klein, whatever. The victims. The victims and, uh, and everybody's returned back to normal. They capture the creatures and everybody's back. You know, and things are as they were. Thank you for releasing me. Oh, oh, oh. I've masturbated so many times. <laughs> can't even can't, walk. I can't, oh. I'm numb. So, Jimmy, how about those pies? He like, bitch, I just got my skin pulled back and put back together. You talking about pies? <laughs> Find this guy. No wonder they don't like this guy. I quit. <laughs> the only the only thing scary now is uh is the are the rejection letters. That oh, Gary yeah. keeps getting. Yeah, good. Which he should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's telling me you're a shitty writer, man. Another rejection notice. Hey, I can take it. <laughs> you know, I even like that uh, Jay and Klein or whatever it is. Even even he don't like him. That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah, mocks him. He mocks him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Garrett is not going to be writing any books, but at least he was put into a book. It's true. One of... Uh, Mr. Klein's books and Klein does not, no one likes this guy. Yeah. The loud mouth guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> if it is written, it must be true. <laughs> Next. Oh, the end. Oh, or is, or it? is it? I like the way he, he just couldn't be the loud mouth blockhead guy, a lunkhead guy. It had no. to be the loud mouth guy in the wheelchair. No, that guy. Damn cripple yeah. in the chair. <laughs> Him. <laughs> there you go. One of the I'm really surprised by this, man. Yeah, no, definitely one of the, the best episodes of that series. Of uh, one of 40, 40 episodes, despite being only one season, did have quite a few episodes. That's what I'm amazed by. You told me they had 40 episodes. 40, 40 for, for one season. One season. Mm -hmm. Like, how did they even air all those? I know, it's crazy. Must have taken like uh, like at least what two years you would think. Yeah, to get it's come out, out like twice a week or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go, y'all. Executive producer, Joe Mio Junk, Danny Goldberg. Good job, guys. Yeah.